I say to my Republican friends, and I do have many, uh, take back your party. This is the grand old party. Take uh, it back from whom? Take it back from extremists who are taking it over the edge, anti-government ideologues who really don't believe in a public... So for all of those Republicans ushered in to cut big government spending out, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi essentially saying, get out. I guess she's telling Republican Congressman Mike Kelly to get out. Goodbye. There's the door. Not going. What I'm staying. No, I'm staying. I'm staying. Although I, I, I do know that one day you're branded a radical uh, when you try to come up with something that makes sense and is responsible. And then the same day you're labeled an extremist by people who really do understand extremism. I, I don't know that the country could be more extremely disappointed in the last three and a half years of what's going on under this administration. So while, while Ms. Pelosi talks very nice and, and says these things, you know, while she was a leader, they could even pass a budget. Well, not, not as a leader, but as the Speaker of the House. They couldn't pass a budget. That's what the majority of the House, the Senate, and the President. So I said, you know what, I'm disappointed, and I'm extremely disappointed that the government's trying to take over one-sixth of our economy with the health care, going to appoint 15 unelected people to make decisions on what kind of health care our seniors get, Cut a half a trillion dollars. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic that it will, it could be an unelected judiciary that the reigns on that unelected parade. Could 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 happen. I mean, none of us know for sure, but it certainly could happen. Um, what what do you think of what she's saying about Tea Party? She's never been a big fan. Has liked the <laughs> Occupy Wall Street movement. Yeah. But more or less, she's saying, oh, this fan, too, shall pass. And well, I mean, but again, this is a group that likes to pick and choose winners and losers. Tea Party, bad. Occupy, good. Uh, now, when you boil it down, there's probably things about both uh, movements that some people like and some people don't like. I always thought the Tea Party people said, look, you know what? We've been taxed enough already. That made sense to me, especially coming out of the private sector and trying to get through higher taxes, not just at the federal level, but at the state level and at the local level. Well, so are you not a just Tea one Party? Are you? I would say that I embrace almost all the principles of the Tea Party. I would not be the type of person, yeah, I'm a Tea Party guy and the Tea Party loves me. I would never be The Tea Party guy, you know, like Mitt Romney. Tea Party guys who I know, I think except the fact, you know, we've got to make sure that we change the person sitting at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And I think that at this point, there are a lot of them are looking at, at uh, the governor and saying, he's a guy that made it in the private sector. Also worked in the public sector. They didn't come sector. off the bench immediately no. saying they loved the guy. That might not matter. But in the end, you're, you seem to be saying they, their dislike of the president will trump whatever their wishy-washiness on Romney. I, I, th I go back to the extreme disappointment of this country. These are Obama economies. They, this is not President Bush's fault. Now he and thinks he, things are getting better. Well, I, things are getting better. I, I understand. I just, He's leading in swing states. You know what? If you stay in Washington, D.C., things do He leads better. in your fun state. He, he, may be, he may right now, but there's still some time to go in the game. And again... You don't think the president will intensely? Well, I'm not sure. There's an old saying where I come from. It's fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Uh, the American people are taking a long look at what this president said as a candidate and how he's performed as a chief executive so officer. So why is he doing so well? Polls, you're right, and you and I have chatted about this before, mean nothing. They're all I have to go on right now, and the polls look good for him. Well, I mean, I, listen, I, I think the president has a forum to speak from that he can say a lot of good things, and he gets credit for a lot of things that he really didn't have an awful lot to do with. I, when he shows up in Oklahoma and talks about that part of the pipeline right. being completed, he says, boy, I'm all for it. We need to go forward. So, well, what about the rest of it, Mr. President? I mean, Prime Minister Harper said the other day, you know what? Uh, and barring the line from the president, we just can't wait. We're not going to wait for the United States, who's our biggest customer right now. Well, Prime Minister Harper or did talk about that in that deal potentially with China. Yeah. This is from Prime Minister Harper a little earlier. Look, uh, the very fact that a no could even be said um, underscores to our country that we must diversify our energy export markets. What he's saying, if you're not going to buy in America, we have... <laughs> We have these Chinese buyers. There's enough people in the open market. It's a global economy. If China's willing to buy that product, why should Canada sit there? Again, the president keeps saying, well, we just can't wait. We just can't wait. Well, you know, I agree with him. We just can't wait. Finish the Keystone Pipeline. Make sure that Canada understands that we're going to buy their oil. What about what natural gas? Now, Pennsylvania, I know in the Saudi last couple of years, you guys have found out you're sitting on like a gazillion dollars <laughs> of it. Um, but environmentalists are saying go slow. Well, well I, I, listen, I don't think any of us uh, want to take a chance with our water or air, but we also don't want to take, take a chance with our economic freedom either. You can do it. There's three of things. You've you got you to explore to find it. You've got you to bring it out of the ground. You've got to extract it, and you've got to protect the environment. That could create over 2 million jobs. And I'm not talking about minimum wage jobs. Right. I'm talking about family-sustaining jobs. The grid has to
to be replaced. Neil, I'm sorry, there is so much upside for this country right now. The skies are getting bluer. The sun's getting more shiny. But we have to take advantage of what God's given us right beneath the surface. And I, and I go back to you, listen, the president says all the above. I said, don't forget all the below. That also includes coal. <laughs> and we've got tillable soil and we've got potable water, which not a lot of places in the world do. All right. All the below as well. All, all the below. Congressman, thank you. Good thank you. It's good seeing you.